Good afternoon and welcome to Taking the Time. Hey, how's everybody doing today? This is uh, Brad and Brian with Taking the Time. And what do we have today? Buddy? Oh, man. So as you can see on our banner above, we are taking a look at the Stratton Yacht Racer. Super cool watch. Um, we both got it. There's our wrist check. So we have uh, been enjoying this watch for the day. Um, and poor Brian got his before I got mine. So uh, he's been very patient with uh, with, <laughs> with waiting on me to get mine. I did. <laughs> I did. And then we, uh, we decided to do the show a little differently. So. So, yeah, see, it's kind of a double unboxing slash review of the Stratton Yacht Racer. You, you, you remember, you, you saw it here first, all two right. of you. So, <laughs> you know, it's fantastic. But, you know, we, we know we get a lot of uh, people that watch afterwards. Um, I'm going to start with kind of the, the packaging. And comes in a, let's see, a nice... Nice brown leather case with a yeah, uh, and then it has the the brown leather. I don't know if that's backwards. Logo right in the head, yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's a and it's. I mean, this thing is a, a good travel case. Um, un, unzip this. Let's see. Put the watch in there for some effect. So, and this is uh, this is not the first time. I've seen um, that style of travel case with a with a micro, so it's a, a pretty standard um, travel case box. Uh, sometimes you'll have a second uh, spot for a watch on the top side. In this particular case, that's where the the booklet that it comes with it is placed. Yeah. So, uh, a, a nice single uh, single watch travel case is how that pack comes packaged. And and you know I mean honestly the the I know so many people say the packaging doesn't matter it's another box you still throw in a drawer, so that's that's why we kind of kind of yeah. skim it over that part it's not not too relevant. Yeah, I mean then you know here, here's that. But we did go ahead and and show that to you and let you check it out. And then in the bottom there it is. So you know it, it's not it's nothing over the top but it, I'll tell you it is extremely well protected in there. I mean, it's like a little vault for it. So, you know, it kind of gives you that warm fuzzy. Also the, uh, the little booklet that it comes with um, is, it tells you about basically how to set it uh, with almost every single movement that they offer, which is nice because it's, I mean, it's not often that I get a watch that I don't know how to set, but yeah. sometimes you know, it's some are a little more difficult than others, and you know, it may be a complication that we haven't dealt haven't dealt with before. Um, so that's it's really nice. To tell you, you know, just about Stratton. Everyone. Stratton uses so many different movements, and and that's why when you go on the website, you can see a starting price of like I think uh, I think the cheapest model is the Daily Driver, and I think it's around two seventy nine somewhere in there, yeah. all the way up. To uh, Swiss mechanical chronographs, um, like the Yachtmaster, um, the Eta version of that's coming out, I think next month. And so, I mean, there's there's Mecca Quartz, there's the the ST19, which is is what the yacht racer that we have is, which is um, a remake of uh, the Venus uh, 127, I want to say. Um, so it's a you know it's an original oh, one, 175. 175, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I always get that number wrong for whatever reason. So, you know, this particular model is kind of a heritage tribute clone movement. So, I mean, looking at this watch is head to toe retro. Like the yeah. movement, you know, it's a throwback movement, you know, and then the case styling. And it's just, all right, I'm already, I'm already geeking out, right? <laughs> no, exactly. I mean, here, you know, it in the, the little, uh, the little booklet, you know, Swiss movement S24-515.24 hertz GMT movement. They have, you know, and it tells you how to do that. The Miota 9015, uh, Miota 9122, uh, Swiss movement 2894, 
movement yeah, uh, Dino one. I mean, so there's an, a number of movements that these watches do come with, and they want to. They really want to make sure. And the warranty card is actually the first or second page in that little, uh, the little book, which is kind of. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, no, but yeah, and you just kind of write it down. I'm sure it's you know, also all online because everything is now. But yeah, I mean that's uh, that's one of the things that's really cool about it. And the other thing I, I like about this, it takes me back to my um, my childhood and growing up on you know on sailboats in the summertime and actually racing in regattas and things. And it was, you know, this is before you know, smartphones and things like that. So, you know, it was, you would see people at the, you know, the yacht club or the boat club and guys, you know, getting ready to start the race, you know, real captains that were actually competitive. And you'll almost always see the red, you know, kind of that pale red, that white, and then the pale blue. And, you know, on this watch, it has the, um, the sub-second hand, and then the red second hand on it. But then when you start the chronograph, actually, it's divided into three 10 minute segments. A lot of times, when before a boat race, here's the thing it's, it's always a moving start. And so as you sail towards the start buoy, or you sail away from it, rather, you need to you need to know about how much time after they sound the horn. You usually have 10 minutes, sometimes it's 15, but this is set in 10-minute intervals but to be the red and the white, and you can see it on the screen there. That's perfect. And what that's useful, it's utilitarian for boating, actually, because you need to start that cross-finish line at exactly the right time. You don't want to be too late. Otherwise, boats are going to be ahead of you. And you definitely don't want to be early because then you get penalized and you have to turn around and go back and start again. So by not only using you know, the time, but also by the color, knowing when the bow, the nose of the bow should cross that start line, you know, it makes a huge, makes a huge difference in those always very nautical themed uh, colors. Uh, here... It's um, yeah. This uses. Yeah, go ahead. Kind of see that, uh, and and I think, and not being not being a person that ex has experience with um, with with yacht racing per se, I'm looking at this and I'm like, all right, the first ten minutes are in red. So it's like if you're going too fast, like if you're hitting your, you know, if you're hitting your marks too early, you need to slow down. I guess that's kind of how that breaks down. Is that is that right? Actually, the, the first part, usually you're going kind of uh, backwards away from the starting line and they'll sound the horn 10 minutes before and you want to, you know, you need to, or, you know, you, you need to make sure that you go down, you get away far enough, but you can tack back around and come around. So you cross the start finish line when they fire the cannon, it's a small cannon. Um, and that's, that's what starts the actual race. And you want it, you know, it's kind of like, here's the buoy and you want it to be boom. And you're across, you know, you don't want to yeah. be late. You don't want to be early. Penalize, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, and it, I mean, it's these, anybody that's in, in, into boating, especially sailing and things like that, you know, they're definitely going to recognize this as a boating inspired one. <laughs> Um, and I mean, how about the water resistance on this chronograph? Hello. <laughs> the 20 atmospheres. 200. Oh my God. Two, that's 200. I saw that. I'm like, is that right? So, so here's the caveat guys. And, and if you buy the watch, you'll get the notification. So we're working with an ST19 movement, 200 mil, uh, 200 meter millimeters, 200 meter water resistance. So it's got a screw down crown. So that's the one thing you need to be cognizant of when you're winding the watch because it is a manual wind watch. You don't want to wind it all the way down because you need to screw the crown down. So, yeah, you know, if you do about 35 winds, then screw the crown down, then it's all the way wound. Otherwise, you'll have to, you know, set the chronograph and let it unwind a little bit so that you can go ahead and, and finish her off. <laughs> so, 
But, um, maybe we should go ahead and hit all the specs real quick. What do you think? Well, yeah, absolutely. And just to, you know, to talk about that, uh, Stratton did send the email about the, you know, if you wind it till it stops, they did it so you don't overwind it. But if you do wind it till it stops, they said, just, you know, wait a few hours or something. But actually, if you just run the chrono feature, it's going to start unwinding a lot faster. So you know, that's, that's a way to kind of little, little kind of cheat to get it done easier. And, you know, then you can push it back down. They do have double gaskets on the pushers. So that's how you, you get that crazy 200 meter water resistance. But, and uh, and what, was, what was interesting about that, sorry, is I was, I was running my chrono cause I time therapy sessions and things like that. And they're two different buttons. So they're going to feel different. So the top buttons, you know, starts it and stops at the bottom button res resets it. And one of the things I noticed is, and I didn't realize these were two different buttons until after that. And then I started looking at the watch and you can tell they're two separate buttons. So when you reset it, it feels it's, it's a real, I would call it a soft, a soft feel because of the gaskets and, and yeah. more so than the top. I mean, it's, you can tell that you're pushing through gaskets, but on the bottom, it's like a real gentle reset. So that was, I thought that was interesting. I'm like, Oh, you know, is there something wrong with my watch? And then I asked Brian, you know, how's yours functioning? And it feels, you know, the, the same description was, was um, in fact the case. So, yeah. Sorry. The, you know, no, on the top, you can actually get an audible and you feel it a, a detent when you push it and then yeah. reset it. Just, I mean, it snaps everything back into position, but it doesn't, it's a light touch because of the, the double gaskets, which give it the 200, uh, 200 meter, which is 600 feet or 667 feet or something. I mean, that would, I mean, basically, you, um, it used to be that um, boat racing watches were chronos that were at least rated to 100 meters because of the wear and tear in the water and everything. Um, so they had to have the extra gaskets. And, they, and Stratton really did their homework with this one. And, and yeah. they made, an actual racing watch and they did a great job so let's start off with uh, some of the some of the specs we're gonna have a 22 millimeter bracelet um doesn't doesn't taper really at all with some you know, solid end links um, very nice nicely finished and um all it's you know it's all uh, full stainless steel it's plenty it's plenty heavy um, this particular model is, is interesting. Stratton did, did, once again, they did it right. Um, know your audience. They came in a 40 or a 43 millimeter uh, dial, which I got the 43, and you did as well, Brad, I think. Yep, yep. So, yeah, excellent. Um, uh, the lug to lug uh, for the 40 millimeters uh, is 45 millimeters, and then on the 43 mil. It's 48.5 lug to lug. Both models are 13.4 millimeters thick. So it's not, you know, a wrist cannon by any, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's not huge or, you know, getting in the way, which is really nice. Uh, you have the dome, dome sapphire crystal with uh, AR coating, uh, hardened aluminum bezel. I think it's, yeah, it's 120 click unidirectional. Um, the loom on the hands, the the hands, the hour markers are loomed with C three, and I think the bezel is as well. I know the the bezel is loomed. Yeah. Uh, so C three. Yeah, awesome. yeah, and it's it, it really it's on here. You know, dark shots of these so it's not even worth I, trying i tried to do i tried to do a loom shot um but i'm terrible at loom shots <laughs> so, um but it i mean it's not a loom monster like a lot of the divers that people love and go after but it it does its job i'm i'm i know the if if the wife was listening she'd be like you are a loom monster but i'm really not a you know i'm not so i don't need all that glow. So 
but I mean, it does it does the job. There's enough loom there to where if it's dark, you can still read the time, and I'm I'm good with that. Yeah, and I mean, and you have to remember that even though it has that 200 meter water resistance, this is not a diver. Exactly. It's, exactly. It, it was, it's a it's a racing watch. It's but it's for you know boat racing. Some are made for car racing, etc. Stratton's very uh, enthusiastic about that. You know, um, auto racing, motorcycles, boats, everything. So you have to remember that. I mean, this is this is a hard use watch. I mean, this is meant to be, you know, worn. You can wear it in salt water. It you know it shouldn't shouldn't fail. Um, it's going to be able to take the punishment of a boat race. And trust me. I've sailed in races in, in hurricanes and everything else. I mean, it's going to beat on you, the equipment. And you know, your watch is really one of the last things you want going overboard. Um, so that's a real, real bummer. I know. I'm not, even, I'm not even going to call you out on. I think I just heard you say that you raced in a hurricane. Yes. I'm not even I'm not even gonna call you out. I'm yeah. just gonna keep going. Yeah, I don't Her, Hurricane Bertha on the Chesapeake Bay. <laughs> the, 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 I think it was the Bacardi Cup race on the Chesapeake Bay in the nineties. Um it was Hurricane Bertha. Yeah. Actually the they spect, people on the spectator boats were getting sick, so they had to call the race off. And uh that year Hurricane Bertha technically won the race. So it said on the trophy at least. But yeah. So you're in so Google that. <laughs> no, it is. You fact check it. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, um, okay. So we covered the specs. Okay. So, so what was your initial reaction when you saw the watch, when you pulled it out of the bag? Um, initially, I'd say it, was, it really had a, a wow factor. You know, I, you know, I got it in the packaging was, you know, good. It was, you know, kind of a standard, um, you know, a standard single watch travel box. You know, it didn't have. Yeah, just, let's just focus on the watch. When you oh, saw the dial yeah. and that that case, what what were what was going on in your mind? Oh, in my mind, it was like this is hardcore. I mean, boat racing watch. Um, yeah. and you know the I felt it actually, and it was my my wife actually ordered this for me for a, a birthday present. So you know, I was really excited that she actually had the day off when it arrived. And, you know, I was just like, wow, this is so cool. And, you know, of course, you know, I, was, I tried it on, you know, I was playing with it. And it was funny because Brad had let me know that his was still delayed. And I said, oh, I just got mine. And he's like, are you serious? And like, yeah. And uh, so, you know, I and, think mine was delayed because of the typhoon and uh, hit Japan like the day it arrived in Japan. Yeah. So then, I, then it went back to Korea. It was strange. We don't need to, we don't need to talk about the tales of FedEx, do we? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, guys in the comments, if you really want to talk about <laughs> that, I mean, we can make this, we can really, you know, make it boring. Here it is again. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up those pictures for Justin on yeah, uh, we'll, on the screen here. What it look like, yeah. So, and it does have an exhibition case back, which I think Brad is going to talk about some more in a minute. It's really yeah. it's really difficult, especially with a bracelet, because you can't you know just pull it apart. Um, yeah, like so, so. But anyway, yeah. I mean, my initial impression was quality. You know, this feels, it feels good. And then I, I tried it on and made sure that the brace fit. I actually had to take it in on just a little, a little bit to fit my wrist. But, you know, I checked the, the chrono functions and all that. It was just, it was, it was awesome. Uh, and I thought it was, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, there we go. There you go, Justin. That's, that's a, a pretty decent macro shot of the dial. And then, so, yeah, I mean, like, so when I first saw it, I'm like, all right. And then I'm like, and then I kind of started looking at it a little closer. I'm like, oh, man. And like, so my initial was like, this is cool, but it's like, oh, oh, it's like, it's grown. It's like definitely grown on me. And it's yeah. kind of like the Yemma, the Yemma was like that too, like, like when I first got it, I'm like, this is cool. And then it just, 
like the longer I wear, I'm like, man, this is comfortable. It's classic look. Like I'm just, I'm just digging it. Yeah. So uh, that I mean, that was my my uh, initial initial reaction was like, all right, this is pretty cool. And then there there's a good image of the case finish, and yeah. I'm very pleased with the finish. Um, very anal about case finish. And there's the there's the bezel and not so great focus on the crown, but there's a logo on the crown. You can see the doming and the distortion in the crystal, which is super, super cool. Yeah. In my opinion. Um, the attention to detail is is exceptional. I have I have one criticism, and that and we kind of mentioned that we were when we were talking before. I wish the second hand was like maybe a millimeter and a half longer, just a hair longer to hit into the white of the track. And I know some people are, are really, really anal about that. And maybe I am too, but it really doesn't bother me that much. It's just like, I got to pick something. So that's going to be my thing. Well, yeah, I mean, I, and I'm going to, I'm going to agree with that. You know, I, I wish it was just a, a, just a shade longer because as I'm, ac I'm actually running it now and I'm trying to see and get it lined up exactly. Yeah. I mean, they're like the, the, yeah. the finish, the fit, the, the, you know, everything set right. You know, some, you know, chronographs are kind of, kind of, if you can see this, but it the it is the, the second hand and the minute hand are the exact same length. So yeah, it, you know, which it, it's great that but yeah, a little a little more length on the on the second hand wouldn't have hurt. But I gotta say, I mean the rest of it is just ten out of ten. The yeah. attention to detail and the the homage to the vintage racing watches just kind of like any, anybody that's watched us knows that we both scuba dive and you know that um you know we you know we have diver watches things like that and i've i've gotten away from i've gotten away from divers i'm kind of i guess i'm kind of over them i guess but um and this this watch really spoke to me i know it's not it's not a diver but it's a it's a you know aquatic themed Oh, yeah. but this this watch spoke to me because of the the color scheme um the the tone of the red it's kind of like that faded it's kind it's kind of got like an aged feel so it's like it almost looks vintage but it's new you know and then the blue is like a faded blue i, I just i love the color the color of of the the red and the blue that's used it was just i mean well done well done kyle he he was on the show uh was it a week and a half ago about yeah about that yeah so if you guys want to um hear hear kyle and and hear our interview check back in our archive um it's also posted on on youtube uh, veterans watch collector channel so you can always go back and check that out because we did have him on like a week and a half ago and we talked about you know the, how you know how he started kind of the feel for the line and things like that and then we also talked a little bit about the diver as well but but yeah I mean, that's uh you know i was talking to my, my stepfather earlier and he's a he's a boat captain he takes people out for charter cruises and everything and really all of the hardcore boat racing watches that are still in existence um that you're going to notice that usually this similar color scheme so once again, Kyle at Stratton, I mean, really did a bang up job with his, with his team uh, to match the colors. Perfect. Anybody that sees this, that knows anything about that um, racing boats is going to know that this is, this, this is, a, this is a heavy hitter and you know, it, it's, it's really cool. But like I said about with diving, you know, you know, I talked to my, you know, my stepfather earlier, he's, and he's a, you know, a captain. And he said, you know, your cell phone's a better the best timer right now. And just Yeah. Yeah. These dive computers. I I do have a bad I do wear a diver watch when I dive. Brad prefers not to. But um computer. I get I get the best NDTs, no deco bottom times with a computer. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're not talking about a slope, but now we're getting so far. This yeah. is probably yeah. just like speaking a different language. You're like, oh, I thought you guys were talking about watches. Now you're talking about, you know, yeah, well. <laughs> no, no decompression, bottom time, et cetera. And so, yeah, that's it. Uh, you know, which which is also interesting. You know, leave in the comments if you want to hear more about diving, uh, anything. Yeah, if you want to hear more. Uh, you know, if you have ideas for reviews, so. Yeah, we should have a well. Okay, so this Saturday, hey Robert, this Saturday or I'm sorry, this Friday we have uh, Valhalla. Valhalla. Yeah. Valhalla of Norway. Like. I should I should be able to say that it should roll off the tongue for a, a number of reasons, but anyway, um, that's going to be Friday. We've got out an Outcast review coming. Yeah, um, yeah. Probably next Wednesday. Is that? Yeah. Is that? Uh, or yeah. or next Friday, so, something like that. And then um, we should be getting the um, the call K A A L. Um, and, and I'm going to get the details on how to pronounce that and properly pitch it. So um, that's going to be coming too. That's a very unique piece. Um, we should be getting that. Uh, Do, you know not in hmm? Do you know which one? I, I didn't ask. Um, I'll, I'll find out and then we can, we can. There's, there's, there's what? Three, three of those. Um, yeah. There's uh Mars, earth, earth and sun, sun, earth. And is it sun? I think I think, oh, yeah. I think that's what I read on their website. Yeah, sun, yeah. earth, and moon. Um, I automatically want to switch that to Mars because of the Omega uh, Moon to Mars. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, at first when I first saw the the prototypes online, I thought it was Mars, and but they're both kind of depicted as a red ball. So, you, so I mean, if you buy one, I, you make it yours. So I, I've I've looked I've looked over the press reliefs. Um, kind of preparing for it and they are going to change the orange to a brighter orange so maybe that's why to kind of reflect you know the sun so but we, we can get more into that later oh yeah yeah absolutely mm -hmm. but i mean yeah i mean so we have some really cool reviews coming up you know like i said if, if you guys have you know something in particular you'd you'd like us to try to try to get into review, uh, you know, let us know. I mean, we're just two regular guys. We don't get paid for this. This is solely, hopefully for someone's entertainment, you know, and, yeah, yeah. you know, we, we appreciate all the, you know, any comments and, you know, just, just everybody, you know, that's anybody that sits, actually sits there and is willing to listen to us. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's you know it's for me it's exciting it's i it really makes me enjoy my week i could be having a terrible day and i get in here and we do this and it just my day instantly gets better this is uh free therapy for both of us i think yeah absolutely kind of gets into the we we dig deep into the watch world and then sometimes we get a little sidetracked and and that's all good but hopefully you guys uh do enjoy the show and and get something out of it Oh, you know what? Um, as I said that, I just realized I never talked about the case back. Yeah, so that's cool. the, case the, back. the case back. The case back is where you um, where you really realize that attention to detail is is the key here. There's um, there's a beautiful pattern swirled into the case back, and then the um, the depth rating, the brand, and this is a limited edition. So whether you have the the 40 millimeter, the 43 millimeter, it's a limited edition of 50 pieces. And that's all etched into, I know this is hard to see, but right on the edge of the case back. And you can really see that beautiful finish. The movement is also very well finished. Nice blued screws in there too. And then of course the upgraded swan neck regulator. Yeah, so. it's, it's so difficult to Yeah. Yeah, the so class we have, we have, has that security security latch. Yeah, I mean it has the flip lock, and then it has the the buttons as well. So, yeah, well, well designed, and then the Stratton signed on the on the flip latch. So, overall, I'm I'm very pleased with 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 this watch. I mean, it's 
it's it's going to get a lot of wrist time. Definitely. And, and not just because I sold a bunch of my other watches over the last month or two. <laughs> so it's what it is, right? I mean, hey, <laughs> but, that, that helps. And I mean, you know, it's, yeah. let's, but that's what we, I mean, you know, we're always, you know, we keep it real. We don't have unlimited yep. budgets. Our, this show, we do, it's completely out of pocket and it's purely for just hopefully people en enjoy it. So, you know, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's for a true passion for watches and orology. We don't get paid by anybody to review these. It's, you know, it's just something we do for fun. So, yeah. Well, uh, you know, um, with that being said, our, our approach to a review, and I mean, obviously, the Stratton is something that we in, like, we chose to purchase and bring into our collection. But from from a review standpoint, now I guess now we're kind of talking to, to the owners a bit, is our mindset is, um, and we, we discussed this, we articulated how we wanted it to look and feel. And so when we're doing these reviews of watches that we're receiving, we're, we're very objective. And, and I mean, opinions, everybody's got an opinion, right? But what we're trying to do is we're trying to look at these specs compare. Cause I mean, you're either going to like the design or you're not going to like the design. So if there's a flaw in it, we'll point that out as, you know, as a, you know, this should have been, you know, this should have been, you know, longer, this should have been done differently, but that, I mean, that's an opinion. So yeah. what we try to do is look at, you know, what we have here, the quality of the finish, um, what movement it is, you know, what kind of loom we basically, we're trying to provide you with information about a piece so that you can compare that piece within, within its competitors, because, you know, we can't compare the Stratton to a $200 quartz watch. That doesn't make any sense. So you can't, you can't, we can't like them all because I'm a picky, you know what? So, um, right. I'm picky. Yeah. So you, yeah. I'm not, you're, you're, I'm just not. you're particular. Yeah. You're particular. So, so, I mean, there, I have I have a, a, an idea of what I'm going to purchase and what I'm going to clean. And, and you have the same, you know, you have the same concept in your mind of, of how you want to construct your watch collection. And that's everybody. So the best thing we can do is provide information. And, and I don't feel like that's necessarily a, a review. It's just giving data. And we, we inject our opinion here. Now, it's like with the Stratton. We both love this watch. Here's the thing, though. I wasn't going to buy this watch because it had an ST19 movement in it. And I think we touched on that when we talked with Kyle. Mm -hmm. and, but I did my research, and I'm like, oh, this is based on a, you know, an older movement, the Venus 175, which is a, a very good chronograph movement from the 60s. And so that, that got me thinking. It's like, all right. And then so I did a little digging. This movement, I know it's a Chinese-based movement, but it has a really good track record. Yeah. And and Stratton's using it. Like, Stratton has a really good track record. So it's like, you kind of got to work through. And that's where the design of this watch is what I'm buying into because I like the way it looks. So that's kind of the, the flow that I had in my mind. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I have to agree 100%. I mean, really, aesthetics are what we buy. Oh, norm, what, what people, what honest people buy watches for. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's cool if you could wear your watch in space. Are you ever going to? Probably not. If you're a regular person, um, if you are going to wear your watch in space and you're on watching this show, please let us know. Um, that would be really cool. If you're going to, dive down to the world's you know deepest depth and try to beat the record and not get crushed by the weight of water above you please let us know we have a number of divers we'd like you to try to break while you're down there so you know it you know most of the the, the real extreme stuff is just a bonus yeah. you know, and so but this, I mean, this is something we, we both liked um and we we both ended up getting the same the same one so 
we say, Hey, you know, buy this, you know, it's because we try not just to give, you know, kind of the advice on, you know, con, you know, for consumer products. So everybody's budget's different. Everybody, you know, everybody's different, but, um, so, you know, this, this is a great watch. Um, it, it, it's going to get a lot of rest time for me as well. Um, I just I love it. It feels great. And this is on, this is on an eight inch wrist, right? You pulled seven and a quarter. Yeah. So, and so, I mean, it definitely fits both yeah. and it's, I mean, solid. Just, I can't you say know, enough was, about the quality. I was really glad that it fit your wrist without needing to add links because yeah. I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to FedEx him a link or two of mine. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. I took, so for, for reference, I took four links out of, out of my bracelet and then adjusted the, the micro adjustments on the clasp, which is nice. There's five adjustments to the clasp. Can't be yeah. beat. Move it about five eighths of an inch or so on the micro adjustments. I, I just, I, I, I use the micro adjustments and actually put it all the way in and it works just fine. Uh, it's fits well. It's not loose. It's not tight. It's just, just right. So, but I think it's about, about that. Yeah. Time. It's about, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're in sync today. We yeah. Are. I mean, <laughs> so yeah. Um, go over to stratwc.com. Check that out. There's only 50 of these. I got 21. Brian got 23. Uh, yeah, so I believe so. There can't be that many left. I know it, it looks like it's still ordered, but so that's with the 43. So there can't be too many left. So if you want one, you better jump on it. So he's also got a diver coming out under uh, Sigmund, the name Sigmund Watch Company. So check those guys out too. The dials are really cool on those. But um, I think that's going to be it for us, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, so if you haven't already, go over to uh, YouTube Veterans Watch Collector channel. Give us a good old subscribe. Of course, we're going to be doing the shows on Facebook as well. So we're happy with, with uh, either way you want to view it. If you're a watch uh, brand owner and you want us to do a review, um, feel free to contact Brian or myself. Um, you can also contact us through taking the time watch talk on Facebook. Uh, we can do the messenger that way as well. Um, other than that, I think, uh, I think we out. Yep. I think that's, that's it for today. We will be back Friday to review the new Valhalla of Norway acts. I'm anxiously awaiting to show everybody that one. I think people have seen that one coming, coming out. And, uh, so I'm going to tell you this, I have it here already. I hope you love it. So hopefully, hopefully you guys can check back Friday. Thanks again for watching. Yep. Until next time. Have a good one, guys. Bye.